Hey everyone, I'm Bren of Creative Living with Bren Haas. And today I have a very special interview with a friend that I met online. I think I met him on Twitter, actually. He is the author of this awesome book, Build It Yourself. Uh, Frank Perone is his name. And this is going to be an exciting interview. You're going to love it. We're going to actually join him all the way in New York from Ohio in the Dome. And you're going to love this interview. So here we go. How fun. This is exciting. I like your workshop. Yes, the workshop is a really great space. It is a really yeah. nice space. I actually have another one at work also. So I have two. I'm very fortunate. I'm very nice. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I notice you have a lot of different birdhouses in the back. Are those just like decorative or? Yeah, okay. These are projects that I have. Um, I've done them for workshops at work. Okay. So we do all kinds of projects. We do we saw potting benches, birdhouses, and trellises. Um, gosh, it, it just goes on and on. There's so many that we do. We do a yeah. lot. It's really nice. I'm just curious. Uh, so I, with the birds, do you, I know there's quite a few different designs back there. D yes. did, do you have to have a specific style for a certain bird or it really doesn't matter? I think it really depends on the size of the hole. I'm not an expert at it. Okay. But, uh, a lot of the holes that you see here into the quarter, and they pick okay. up little uh, finches and, and little okay. birds. Um, okay. But you can change the hole depending on, you know, what you want to do. And there's okay. the large one, which is, they call that the bird condo. Yes, nice. It's, it's, it's really cool. If, if you want to hang on a second, I'll show you something. This particular one, these lift up, but you could clean them out. That is cool. Yeah, the middle one also comes up and the other sides. Okay. And you'd be surprised. I have people coming to the workshops. They're like from eight years old to 80. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's pretty well, that's important. I think people forget, you know, they put together these DIY projects of birdhouses. And it's like, well, the bird, you got to clean it out every year or they're not going to come back in. <laughs> I just did mine. The few that I have in the backyard, I cleaned them all out. So, so we're good. Yeah, you have Yay. to clean them out. Um, and you got to keep them, you know, covered like, or, like you know, uh, polyurethanes or paint or some of that type of stuff is really okay. important. You know, Very cool. That is important. All right. So let's get going here. So, Frank. Say your last name again. <laughs> Perone. Yes. Perone. I got it. You got it. Is it? Is that Italian? It is very much Italian. Okay. <laughs> That's probably why I slaughter it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right? It is I don't know how far you want to go with that, but it is Italian. <laughs> very cool. So I love your book. I do. And I, I wish it was not gardening season for me because I like want to start doing all this, like everything. Yes. There's a lot of <laughs> projects in it. And the book is laid out with easier projects up front. And then you kind of progress through and get a little bit more challenging as you go along. So we, we designed it that way. Very cool. So really cool. How, how long have you been woodworking? Oh, wow. You know, we were thinking about that. Uh, <laughs> We were kicking that thought around. If you read in the uh, introduction, mm -hmm. uh, my grandfather, Francesco, okay, so we are very Italian. Yeah. He, uh, gosh, he moved to the Bronx almost 90 years ago, and mm -hmm. he lived there through the Great Depression, and he actually kind of was like, almost like a tenement farmer. He went there early on, times were rough, there was nothing there. He bartered with the owner of the property and had probably about eight acres of land that he used to grow vegetables. Him and his four sons had to go out and, you know, tend to all wow. of it. And as he got later on, as he got older, I must have been about seven or seven years old. My grandparents watched my brother and I when my parents were out working really hard to try to get us our own home. And, you know, he was an amazing guy. He didn't really speak much English at all, but he was always building something every day. He loved tools. 
they made wine. We had vines. We had a massive fig tree. And I, I just it. stayed with them all the time. And it was all about building things with him. And he was the type of man who just kind of picked up things along the way and said, hey, yeah. we need to build a trellis, so we're going to build a trellis. And hand me the I hand. It. And, you know, I was very, very fortunate. And, you know, writing the book was kind of refl a reflection on all of that. And he had a tremendous support group. My uncles were all, each one were craftsmen in their own field. My father was um, like a tool and die maker, so he was into metals. My uncle was like nice. a fantastic home improvement guy. Another one was a cement mason and stone. Oh, but he was also a great carpenter. He did a lot nice. of carving. So I was always immersed in all of this. And in the book, I point out um, my cousin Marie, uh, you know, because we were very, very close. She would watch my brother and I, and she took us to a public school. And I remember it like it was yesterday going in there. And it was like a craft activity. And they handed us a coping saw and said, <laughs> hey, you know, we want you to draw something on the wood and we want you to cut it. And I think ever since then, it's been like a crazy ride to yeah. uh, just keep building things. That's just something that I do and I love it. It's really Very fabulous. cool. You know, I don't so want they, to share that with everyone. You know? They didn't start you out on the power tools, huh? You weren't on like the table saw right away? <laughs> no, absolutely not. It was all hand tools, mostly hand tools. My father definitely it. kept the power tools away from us. But it was a lot of hand saws. And I think in the book, I've built a lot of these projects with just hand tools. So yeah. it is definitely doable. You don't need um fancy drills or i mean most people have like you know a cordless drill so that's that's something that you could use but i use like a um just like a box with a back saw and when i designed the projects you could take the book to like um a depot or lowe's and buy the lumber because most of it's like dimensional Lumber, right. so it's already cut, pre-cut for you. They may want to cut the lens for you, but you could, you can get it done. It can be done. I've tested it, so it works pretty well. That's nice. Very cool. Yeah. I should have asked you first off. Um, do you get to garden at all, a little bit? I do garden. I'm yeah. more of a vegetable garden guy. Okay, my wife. I love it. Flowers, but we do the vegetables together. Yes. Tomatoes, our pole, pole beans. <laughs> you saw those trellises. I yes. Had. Oh God, we have. Is we have squash we we've, we've used the cold frame quite a bit um so we're mixing it up pretty good and we have just expanded our garden we don't have a huge piece of property but we've expanded okay and uh yeah. we, i wouldn't have it any other way right but with the projects you're able to do and the structures you're able to create you can grow a lot in a little it's space a hell of a lot that's yeah. right Definitely. <laughs> yeah i like going vertical myself personally yeah. uh, i love that uh, and I can't, I got that from my grandfather too. He was a yeah. real vertical type gardener, you know? Yeah. We have a lot of tomato plants, the plum tomatoes where they made Ooh. sauce, you know, oh, yeah. peppers, uh, yeah. wow, squashes. We had the, the mm. squash flowers they used to yeah. make with egg and for breakfast in the morning. It was really nice. Yeah. That's good stuff. <laughs> And you can only get those really if you grow it yourself. I mean, yeah, you, you don't, yeah. <laughs> purchasing, but it's not the same. Yeah, no, no. So, um, let's see. Was this your first publication? Yes. Okay. Yes. Very and, cool. Um, you know, it all came from the workshops. Okay. Yeah. I had a wow. Norman came down and he loved the workshops and yeah. he kept coming back, you know, and then he, he came with his wife and. He was fascinated because if you notice in the book, yeah. I use um, something called jigs and stuff. They're like all these devices and stuff. Mm -hmm. cool and, stuff. Know, I really learned a lot of that because you had to speed things up when I would build things. I did build cabinets. I did all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So to make it easy, you know, you, you get a stick, maybe that's 16 inches long and you mark it and then you always use that instead of using a ruler. So he right. built, the first time he built a pretty complex chair and didn't use a ruler at all. 
And he wow. was, he couldn't believe it. So he said, you know, he was an acquisitions editor for Princeton Architectural Press. And he says, listen, we really need to get together and talk about this. You know, I said, really, why not? Okay, sure, why not? And he says, no, Frank, you know, we, we got a great team. Um, I had Barbara Darko, who was the editor, and Mia Johnson, who was the designer of the book. And we had this concept of a book that was not too big and laid out like a cookbook. Yeah. You can open it up. You know, it's not too intense. It. It's not intimidating. And it no. actually has a quote section in it. Yeah. yeah. And the photographs were all done. Oh. Fun. They're amazing. You did a great, uh, your son did this? Nick did, uh, Nick Perone, he did all of the photographs. And my wow. oldest son, Chris, did wow. all the diagrams. So he had the job of taking nice. the part, measuring every single piece, processing it, and putting it into that format. So it was a real exciting thing to work with my sons. Yeah. And my wife is my editor, too. Don't kid you. She's <laughs> no a referee sometimes, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, you know, for love. Put it that way. Oh, it was so really it's like cool. you've got the whole family in here. The whole family. <laughs> I love it. It's dedication. The book is dedicated to my family. It yeah. really is because – it really kind of brought back all those great memories with my grandparents right. and uncles. And when they would get together, it was yeah. pandemonium. It was like crazy. Was I crazy. love it. it <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love this birdhouse. <laughs> oh, that bird feeder is it. Yes. Or the bird feeder. Sorry. Yeah. And it's that really, is sharp. It's really cool. Because, know? I mean, like when you make it yourself, it's kind of like growing a garden from seed. You don't find that in all the stores, you know? No, you don't. And that's Unique. really what I want to bring back. You know, that was kind of like my mission <laughs> when we started the book. I said to my friend Rob, Rob Schaefer, he's the acquisitions editor. He said, you know, Rob, I said, you got to get people to build stuff again. Remember when you were a kid, you were building stuff and yeah. different. So, you know, that's really kind of my mission. To get people building things again, I think it's really, really, yeah. and growing things too is so yeah. important. They go so well together, yeah. you know. Um, and I think it's happening. You know, we went to a garden show last weekend at Lasden Park, yeah, and Ooh. in New York, and it got free. It was pretty well received. People were really into it, you know. And I did a. a a demonstration where I brought people up who had no experience. And That's like, cool. Really? With the drill? Yeah, come on. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. And they <laughs> did it. They really did it. And they did it well. It was really That's nice. cool. So you bring tools with you to the show. I bring tools <laughs> and projects. It's not about just selling the book. I want to get people involved. And that's where the buzz starts to happen when people okay. see it and they, they understand it. You know, right. they get that little fear in the beginning. Everyone does, you know. Yeah. And but once you get past that and you gain a little confidence, like I've had people come to workshops, they were terrified of tools. Oh, sure. Those were the people at the end showing other people what to do and what not to do. <laughs> Classic stuff. It's really, really nice. It's a I great love tool. it. That yeah. is so cool. So yeah. <clears throat> if someone is new to woodworking, you are just doing DIY projects like this. You have the book laid out where the easy stuff is somewhat in the beginning, yeah. right? But um, would you recommend a project that comes to mind if someone's new? Like, where should they start? Well, you know what? You could start with some of these projects that I have in the book. Mm -hmm. But it is like a cookbook. So, like, if you're going to build the harvest basket and you want it to be 10 inches, change it. Make it your own or adapt it for your skill level. That's the other thing, too. So, like, if you, only, if you only have a certain kind of wood around, just build with that. It doesn't really make a difference. Definitely start with the easier projects and practice. Because if you haven't noticed, on my website, Mm -hmm. I have videos, and I always tell people, make sure you practice, and then you're comfortable with the tools. Don't start <laughs> using stuff, and, like, you're kind of leaning a little bit over your head. That's yeah. why I recommend, you know, starting with hand tools, so you really kind of mm -hmm. get the feel for it. There's nothing right. wrong with a good old saw. Really, there is yeah. nothing wrong with it. I do it all the time. It just speeds things up sometimes. Yeah. Lots of safe. So, yes, use the book as a base and then kind of go with it 
with how you feel comfortable. It's really, really important, you know? Right. See? I love it. So I can't remember which um, chef it was, but there's an Italian chef that I just love. And he had said once about Italian cooking, it's using what you have and it's like the best meals. So it's kind of funny that you say that about the woodwork as well. <laughs> you know? It really is. It's so important. <laughs> it really is a cookbook for woodworking, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. And it's not an intimidating book. Like I didn't no. want to anyone, but I didn't want to make it too complex. So you can use these techniques to yeah. build a bookcase. Or yeah. you can use it to build a bookshelf for your child. Right. Or a crib. So there's like this this technique where you're pre-drilling, you're countersinking, and then you're putting a screw in. So if you kind of keep that technique going mm -hmm. and just change the shape, it'll work with a lot of different things, you know. And I found that was the easiest way to teach people. Some people would say, oh, but why do we have to pre-drill? I said, you know what? It's one other step that slows you down a little bit. Because, you yeah. know, when we do workshops, they kind of get – they get really revved up in the beginning. I yeah. kind, of, kind of bring them back down again. You know? <laughs> Slow yeah. down. Why are we in such a rush? Where are we looking to go? I said, <laughs> and that group, you'd be surprised how they forget about everything else that's going on outside once we get in that space. It's really interesting. And I, and I hope we captured that a little bit in the book. Oh, it's you did. Great of that, you know. Yeah. But, you know, they forget about all their problems and stuff. And, yeah. And they tell me, they'll so, confess to me about bad do you, <laughs> do you do, okay, so you're talking about a garden show you went to. Do you do workshops locally or something? Yes, I do it on okay. my own. I work at a public garden here in New York City. Very and it's cool. a 28-acre facility that mm -hmm. I help run. And we do seasonal workshops there. And if people cool. come to that workshop, my workshop, when you go in there, it's like massive tools, <laughs> it's a fabulous space, the smell of pine, the smell of wood. Uh, we have it. all our tools displayed. It's, it's yeah. really a beautiful space. And they come, and I'll usually have anywhere from six to eight students. Wow. Some projects are a day and a half, some are only a day. And, you know, I, I, I encourage the novices to come. That's yeah. really kind of, I hit it off with them for some reason because, yeah. you know, it's like a blank canvas sometimes. And I mentioned yeah. that in the book, you know, if someone comes to me and they have no experience whatsoever, they're beautiful. They're fabulous because now I'm just teaching them the steps along the way. There's no kind right. of bad habits sometimes, but right. I also get some people that come with a toolkit. I said, you know, he takes up the ruler, he's getting, I said, you know, I, I don't really use that ruler much, you know, oh, no, but you could use it, I said, you know, it's not a bad thing, you know, <laughs> but it's fun to watch that little transformation sometimes. It's, it's very, right. I'm That's fun. I know, I like when you earlier showed the stick and you mark it. I, oh, actually, yeah. I actually garden like that when I do my big garden in the rows. I actually have my dad's old hoe. And it still has the mark from every year how wide my rows are. Yeah, <laughs> Who needs about? a ruler? <laughs> the, in the book, on the back cover is the potting table. I love it. There is a hole I need that. There, which was my grandfather's. Ah, so look. Sure that, that got in there, you know? And yeah. it's this old, broken kind of hole that my dad yeah. welded back together. Yeah. <laughs> favorite you know, so he used to do that too. He would yeah. measure things with sticks and it was really yeah. Real, you know yeah you don't have to get fancy <laughs> it's kind of similar to mine i like one of these that folds you know I those like, are cool these are really cool i love this particular <laughs> one and um i like those better than the tapes you know oh yeah oh <laughs> <that's hard. laughs> yeah, they're so noisy <laughs> So cool. I look at all the stuff behind you. Is there any way, can you like give us a little bit of a tour of some of these things? Well, or yeah. What's really cool is um, <laughs> this, this here is actually my toolbox. Okay. Nice. And it's a toolbox that happens is it opens up like this. And these parts come out and they go into here. <laughs> Oh, look at that. That's cool. So I keep all my tools and everything there. 
And then this all comes out. So it's like a cat, like you can carry it with you and there's more tools inside of that. So That's it's cool. kind of like all this. And then this particular birdhouse here is a green roof birdhouse, which is really oh, cool. You can yes. throw some suckers on the top yeah. of there. Uh, these are just two different versions of birdhouses. The condo, okay, you know the condo. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And then this is the like little guy. You could take that with you outside, your stool, and all that. Would that would be nice. Okay. And then you have the bird feeder. Um, and then you got, here's another toolbox that I have. Nice. All right. And then, I don't know if you saw my most recent project, is this new one. This guy. That's sharp. This is sharp, and a lot of guys on on your site, they want dividers now. So now I have to figure that one out. <laughs> so that's, that's pretty much it. You know? That should be easy. Behind, yeah, it's yeah, it's be cut, good. It's be cut some pieces. <laughs> We're going to cut some pieces. And what I've done now is um, when we went to the garden show last weekend, I made um, some kits. Oh. <laughs> kits. Free cut oh, kit. That's cool. So this is a birdhouse, the one that's in the book. Mm -hmm. All the pieces are pre cut and nice. all the screws, everything's inside the hinges. These were great. People really, really like these. Yeah. So this is something that I added to the website now and kind of opened up like a little online store thing. And, and yeah. we want to try to give people like a, a little bit more of a push to get them yeah. to build stuff, you know? Yeah. That was, that's pretty cool. That's something. That is nice. And that one is be a kit too. That I should make a kit. Yeah. You know? anyway, that is very cool. It's cool. It's nice. You could use it for tools. You could use it for seeds or bulbs, yeah. whatever. whatever. So, We'll see. You could, if you have that online and people can buy it there, you could actually use like a conference room like this and like give classes and yes. have people, you could do that. that the next step. <laughs> <laughs> it can happen. <laughs> Very it cool. Happen and I, yeah, that could be cool. And then I have videos on my website to support building the birdhouse. Uh, yes. I have uh, the one for the harvest basket. I yes. have one for the little stool, the little stool that you can sit on with the toolbox. That's and now cool. I want to do one for that. So at least when you get the kit, if you're not really sure, they come with instructions and pictures and everything. Yeah. Not really sure, you kind of like, you can go to the website, watch it, see it, and you can always contact me. Yeah. yeah. Now these are great projects, um, especially, you know, spring early summer right now is kind of busy everybody's getting their garden in so once you get the garden in and it's growing now what? start making something <laughs> <laughs> you could do it in the air conditioning <laughs> <laughs> there you go like that's so cool that there you go <laughs> oh my gosh this has been so much fun and i love that you are really easy to get a hold of online oh yeah you, you have a accessible and I enjoy the questions. I really do. <laughs> like, uh, some of the posts that I put on your on Garden Chat and all Garden that. <laughs> you guys were great. What a great reception and everybody. That's a great group. And ideas and yeah. and there wasn't a bad one in the bunch. It really was. No. It really was yeah. nice. It was a good time. So cool. They're gonna love this video too. This is very cool. Inspiring. Well, I appreciate that. We're trying, you know. <laughs> so I guess. The best place people can find you if they're trying to get a hold of you would be on your website, though, right? Yes. It's yeah. FrankCarone.com. Two R's in that. Yep. And, um, you know, you can reach me on Instagram also through my website. We have the shop now on Etsy. Okay, that's nice. on Etsy. But you can get it through my website also. I'm on, I'm on Facebook, too, Frank Perone and yeah. Twitter. You know, Frank L. Perone on Twitter. And... Um, you know, this um, Saturday, which is real exciting, I'm going to be at our Barnes & Noble here in Scarsdale, New York at 1 o'clock. And we're going to have a great discussion about the book and sign some awesome. book projects there. And, yeah, it's going to be yeah. really, really exciting. And um, 
If anybody's in the tri-state area, my next workshop is June 17th okay. at where I work. You can find it through my website. And we're going to be doing the fan trellis, which is in the book. Nice. It's a nice project. It's really nice. Very cool. That is awesome. It's a beautiful book. I, I just can't say that enough. I like the end, too. It's, you can tell you're an artist. Yes. It looks like a piece of wood. What is this? Like it's a... On the inside, too, when you open it up. <laughs> yeah, it's a piece of wood. Isn't that great? That's, I love it. That's the designer. She kind of came to me with all these different ideas. I said, Mia, you're on the mark. Got the grain and everything. Yeah, it has the knots in it. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah, and it's a heavy. It's a heavy binding. It's nice. It could open it. Yeah. We could yeah. It. And it's nice to talk to you. I appreciate it. Because this, I mean, you know, you could tell you're a very nice, creative guy, but then when you get to see you in person, and then it Thank just you. makes it all even cooler. I love what you're doing too. I told you that. <laughs> Be sure to click over to my website at brenhaas.com where you will find the links to everything we discussed today in this interview with author Frank Perone. And um, exciting. So until next time, I hope you all get out in the garden.